The death toll rise in the battle US. against coronavirus. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The world is currently in the midst of a brand new pandemic, gripped by a new virus called COVID-19, a virus that has killed thousands already. The new coronavirus started in the Chinese city of Wuhan, and similar to the SARS virus from 2003, is strongly thought to have originated from a meat market, where wild animals are also traded. It is therefore a zoonotic disease, meaning that it is a disease that is spread from non-human animals to humans. Consequently, many people are now blaming Chinese culture for this new pandemic, outraged that people in China eat animals such as bats and pangolins. However, outbreaks of zoonotic diseases have happened before in many places around the world. And so, is there a bigger issue at play here? Now, undeniably, the trading of wild animals and poor regulations and standards for trading animals increases the likelihood of zoonotic diseases occurring. But to understand whether or not something like this could happen again, or anywhere else in the world, we need to look to the past and see the origins of other zoonotic diseases. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns that three out of four new or emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals. And the World Health Organization, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, and World Organization for Animal Health, have previously stated that increased demand for animal protein is one of the main risk factors of a pandemic. According to the AIDS Institute, the HIV virus started because of humans eating chimpanzees. And according to the BBC, the recent Ebola outbreak started because of people eating bats. Furthermore, BSE started in the UK because farmers were feeding dead cattle back to cattle, forcing them to cannibalize. In 1996, the government announced that BSE had jumped to humans. The unit has identified a previously unrecognized and consistent disease pattern. And the genetic lineage of the swine flu pandemic was traced back to a pig farm in the US. The one thing that all of these diseases have in common is that they are linked to our exploitation of non-human animals. In a similar way, because COVID-19 is strongly believed to have started in a meat market, the virus was passed to humans in an environment that only existed because of our desire to eat animals. Zoonotic diseases can be created in any country, and regardless of the country they originate from, our exploitation of animals increases the risk of these diseases emerging. COVID-19 is just the latest in a long history of deadly diseases, many of which have been exacerbated because of what we do to animals, and most likely, it will not be the last. And what awaits us in the future could potentially be even more deadly and destructive. It's easy for us to blame China for what is happening because it removes accountability from our own actions. But there have been extreme cases of xenophobia where people who appear Asian have been assaulted simply for the way that they look. When I looked over, there was someone filming me. It was just coronavirus being repeatedly shouted at me. He punched me twice. The first time he missed, the second time he got me right in between the eyes. And it hit my glasses. My glasses flew off and my glasses broke my nose as well. Yo, 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 yo. Speaking of the virus, police say it may have played a role in this attack. Commenters on Twitter say he even called the woman diseased. Every disease has ever came from China, homie. Everything comes from China. This is a disgusting. Yet as history shows us, the problem isn't country specific or culturally specific. And so if you're stockpiling toilet roll, perhaps it's important to look at what else is in your shopping trolley. Or if you disagree with people eating bats, then the question is, what is the difference between eating bats or eating pigs or chickens? Especially if all free animals are capable of spreading zoonotic diseases. Some zoonotic diseases we can do very little to stop or avoid. But surely that provides us with even more of a reason for us to change our behaviours in order to stop the ones that we can avoid. Especially when those ones have historically been among the most pernicious, severe and destructive of all. How can we claim that exploiting animals is a personal choice when doing so not only kills trillions of non-human animals, but in turn increases our risk of pandemics? How can we point the finger at others for the actions of problems that we are also responsible for causing? If COVID-19 can teach us anything, it must be that in the blink of an eye, everything can change. And we must ensure that when it dissipates, we do not go back to business as usual.
As long as we exploit others, we increase our risk of these things happening again. How many more have to die? How many more viruses does there need to be? How many more need to suffer? And at what point does enough become enough? As we all find ourselves united under the same global crisis, on opposite sides of the world, but dealing with the same threat, can we use this time to reflect on our actions, how we've consumed, how we've lived, how we've eaten? The whole world is coming together during this crisis. People are showing how much strength we all have together in unity. People singing from their balconies, isolated, but not alone. It is times like these where we see the beauty of our species and the interconnectedness of all life. We share this planet together as a species, but also among others as well. Let us use this crisis to learn from our mistakes. Let us learn to treat everyone who lives here with respect and to also respect the planet itself. We may not be able to end all suffering or all pandemics, but we can come together to end those that are caused by our exploitation of others.